not so don't, don't ask so much processing from the servers because less server the less clients are connected to the servers, but the latency is a little higher for one client that's connected to a server and to another client that's connected to another server. We have some data architectures that they can be synchronized, distributed and replicated. For instance, with with the client server it's common to put the synchronized data architecture to the server. So all the data from the game is coded to the server. So if the server drops down the connection, all the players stop. We can have the distributed data architecture that uh, each part of the game is coded to each one of the players. In this, in this way, if one player drops down the connection, they cannot continue to play because part of the data was loaded. And the replicator where we put all the data from all the players, so if one player drops the connection, the other players can continue to play. We have also a little bit of socket client sample. Now we have uh, just an overview of an explanation that uh, we have a server that needs to open a socket connection, for instance, the most common for the player games. So we have a server that is listening to a socket in the port 21, and a client then asks to connect to the server. So after that, the server needs to ask for a command for, instance, the port to create another thread so creating a child of that server to be able to handle with that client in a unique way. And do not be busy, busy to that client. In this way, if another client asks to do the connection to that server, that server creates another fork to create another child, another thread to handle with that client. Handle with each client with, this, with one connection. Also, let's talk a little bit about organization of networks. For instance, an organization of sections, this is a very common way that they organize sessions in your games. We have the server, the world, the log, and the room. Well, we can do this in many different ways, basically these three. We can put, put us searching for a room. When the rooms are under the world, that are under the server. For a player, he doesn't know anything, he just asks for a room that he puts some filters, like the difficulty or the map. Then, it shows a list of rooms that satisfy that conditions and the player can start to play in that situation. Choosing lobbies is very common, for instance, it was common to the StarCraft and Warcraft games from Blizzard that use the Battle.net and now the Battle.net 2.0, that is the new one, and they use this. We have a lobby that, for instance, can be named as the skill of the player. After joining that lobby, the players can talk between themselves, though so they connect to, they create a room, and they invite other players that are in that lobby to play together. Or we can use all the levels. For instance, here we have an example that the server is separated by region. For instance, we have a server in America, and we have a server in Europe. We have uh, another words that can be fancy names to categorize these players. And we have the lobbies as back there. We, the player joined the, in the lobby, depends on the skill level of the player, and they can divide, create rooms. And we can talk a little bit about the results of this project. Well, uh, a work has been done with, together with a game company that's called North Chinto Games, that is here in Milan doing. Uh, it was held on the Fire Engine, that is a game engine for PlayStation 3 and Windows. It's in fact a very, a very, multi, very modular game engine that was modeled also for the Xbox. Well, in that library, we, we created the network utility to extend the functionality of Fire Engine. In this way, we could use the, the things from the PlayStation Network or the Xbox Live. For instance, to use the PlayStation Network, uh, network with library, we use some finite state machine. I think I can't talk too much about the PlayStation Network, how it works, because it's held by secure documents from Sony. And what I can say is that they works as a finite state machine. And our utility that was created on Fire Engine, it calls the automatically the state machines just as a method. For instance, if uh, the developer calls the functions open, 
it do automatically the login and open a connection to the PlayStation Network and, for instance, can search directly for a room. Instead of when we are using the Xbox, it's different because the <coughs> Xbox has a low-level socket library and the Xbox has a network high-level API. In the API from the Xbox, we can tell it to do an interface with the low-level socket. So in our utility that was also designed to work with the Xbox, we could call it network high-level API to work with the socket. In this way, being easier to work than to the PlayStation Network. Well, our conclusion is that uh, we can see that the market is very high on that. We have Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo work in the network games. We have not just them, but also in the, in the Windows and Mac. <coughs> We have the Steam that belongs to Valve, and we have also Microsoft working in Windows with the games for Windows Buy, that they are implementing this kind of network system in PC, that was about further developed on that, uh, in the company, but uh, this is divided by the load time, we could do it. And we have these two new actors that is online and <coughs> free, that they are two cloud computing games. They provide a way that you play as a streaming. They just have the games on their servers and you connect them. You don't need to specific hardware to connect on them. It's almost like YouTube. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much. Questions? Photos, you think are more say, are, are peculiar of the gaming setting because some of the things you were you were talking about are quite general right and so for instance the, the problem of socket and how you design this way of invoking socket basically a standard way for any server as well as uh, I suppose uh, you know the, the, the performance versus uh, uh, latency could apply also to you know, beating systems online or any other things so, which are the more peculiar things? And second, um, so you basically, your thesis is basically an overview of the state of the art, let's say. And then finally, you mentioned that you did something on, on a specific platform. So, mm, I couldn't really understand why you didn't focus on that part that was what you really did. Yeah, the biggest part on that is that, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't put more of my work in the thesis because they are confidential documents. As I asked to my boss on blockchain for games, and it was a little bit longer, and he told me, well, you cannot put so specific parts on your pieces, otherwise we can have a uh, sole over us from Sony or Microsoft, because they are confidential documents. And what I think is, is important to, to say here is that that's the important thing. If you do a connection, a game network library to games, it's not that different from doing a web server. You have the sockets connection, you have all, all the same protocols that are used to do that. So that's what my function in, in showing this, that it's not hard to do something in games, learning the things from computers, from the normal systems, the unit systems that we are using. 